Hi guys, what's up? Last time we talked about the popular sanguine, and now it's the perfect melancholy's turn. As you may already know, perfect melancholies are deep, thoughtful, and analytical. They are born with pessimistic nature, and often predicts the problem before the problem even occurs. They are serious and purposeful, intellectual, very creative, very detailed, also neat and tidy. Perfect melancholies sure seem like the perfect type of people, huh? <laughs> Snappy! I think when it comes to perfect melancholies, their main problem is that because they think they are one of a kind. They think that the world doesn't understand them because they are just so unique. And that they are the only ones with problems, and they suffer more compared to the other temperaments. To understand better, let's just take a look at their problems, specifically one by one. The first problem is, perfect melancholies are easily depressed. Ever met someone who always seems to have dark clouds hovering above their heads? I have because I used to be like that too since I'm a perfect melancholy myself. The first solution to this problem is realize that no one likes gloomy people. Admit it, even perfect melancholies themselves subconsciously don't like to hang around gloomy people. I mean, who would want to hang out around someone who always says negative things all the time? I'm tired. Mom loves brother better. This is so unfair. Why does it have to rain today? I'm just sick of everything. It's tiring to listen to all that mumbo jumbo. The second solution is don't look for trouble. Perfect melancholies love to turn the positives into negatives. For example, if someone gives them a compliment, they will deny it and turn it into an insult instead. Hey, nice outfit! Seriously, this is the worst outfit anyone could ever wear! Hey girl, you look really cute! No I'm not, I'm as ugly as hell! Wow, your handwriting is so neat! You're making fun of me, aren't you? If they keep this up, no one will want to compliment them ever again. Just saying a simple thank you will do. The third solution is don't get hurt so easily. It's kind of crazy, but perfect melancholies actually enjoy getting hurt. They enjoy making it seem like they are the victims. They would even go as far as writing down the list of times they get hurt by other people as evidence. Dear Diary, Today Benny asked if he could borrow my pencil. I lent it to him because I thought he would use it wisely. I regretted my decision when I saw him using the eraser on the pencil end. That precious tiny eraser. Everyone knows that eraser should never be used to erase things. It should be preserved forever to maintain the pencil's beauty. But no, Benny just had to use it. Darn him! He keeps ruining my life! I hate him! I hate him a lot! You might think that it's an exaggerated example, but honestly, I used to be like that when I was in junior high. Pretty creepy, huh? There's actually no use in doing that. So, stop writing your grudges down, man. It's unhealthy. Stop being so sensitive over trivial things. It's kind of like the previous solution. Perfect melancholies take some things too seriously, even when they are meant to be jokes. I remember the time back in junior high. My hair had gotten longer, so I decided to put it in a high ponytail. I thought I looked pretty darn awesome. But then, when I got to class, a friend of mine saw my hairstyle and said, Hey, your hair looks like a fountain! I was crushed. And ever since then, I never put my hair in a high ponytail again. When I think about it now, I realize how silly I was back then. That kid didn't mean to offend me. She might have even intended to compliment me. I mean, fountains are beautiful. Who doesn't like fountains? The fourth solution is, look for the best in things. Let's say you don't like a certain person. Try searching for some positive traits this person has. And whenever you face a problem, just look at the bright side. There's always something to learn in everything you encounter. Now the second problem that perfect melancholies have is that they have low self-images. They look down upon themselves and they often think that they're just not good enough. The solution is, search out for the source of insecurities that you have. Try writing down the list of things about yourself, like for example, how your hair is like, or what type of person you are, or what special talents you have. Then after you finish it, write down the list of reasons for the things you have written. If you wrote that you are a freak, or that you don't have any special talent in you, ask yourself, did someone ever say those things to you? Was it your parent? Your friend? Your arch enemy? Have someone else evaluate whether those reasons are valid or not. If they are, you can work for improvement. But if they aren't, just forget about it and move forward. Don't let other people's judgments get the best of you. The third problem is, 
perfect melancholies procrastinate. The reason for this is because they are such perfectionists. They have extremely high standards that even they find it hard to fulfill. That's why they tend to procrastinate every time they are working on a project. The first solution is get the right thing before starting. Because perfect melancholies are perfectionists, they find it hard to begin doing things because they can't seem to find the right thing to begin their project. The second solution is related to the first solution, which is don't spend too much time planning. I'm gonna go to the park today. Let's see. I'll need some books, snacks, in case I get hungry, and an umbrella in case it rains. Wait a minute. If it rains, I won't be able to sit at the park. Okay then, change your plans. I'm gonna go to the library instead. But wait, today is Sunday. The library will be so crowded, I won't be able to enjoy my books. Again, change of plans. I'll go to my friend's house instead. But what if she's not at home? What if she's on vacation? I guess I'll just have to change my plans again and... Dude, just do it. Overthinking things won't get you anywhere, so stop planning too much and just get on to it already. The final problem is perfect melancholies put unrealistic demands on others. I'm really guilty of this. You see, I have a best friend who is a popular sanguin, and every time she comes over to play at my house, I always feel giddy whenever she puts her stuff so carelessly in my room. She would toss her back on my perfectly made bed, put her clothes on the floor, and leave her stuff scattered around the room. I am always screaming in frustration inside my mind, and I can't stop myself from tidying around when we are actually supposed to be hanging out together. So for all you perfect melancholies out there, don't put such high standards on your friends. It just won't work. You will only get stressed out from doing it. The final solution to all this problem is be grateful that you understand your temperament. By understanding your temperament, which is the perfect melancholy, you can learn to become more laid back and accepting. Don't think that other people are out there to get you because they aren't. Popular sandwiches and powerful colorics often say words without thinking much, but they don't mean any harm, so don't get hurt by that. It's just how they are. Okay, that's all for now. I hope this video is useful to you. Let me know what you think of it in the comment box below. Oh yeah, and this video is dedicated to my best friend, Sushi Day 123. If you're watching this, stay positive, man. The next topic will be about the powerful choleric, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I guess I'll see you all later in. Have a nice day. Bye!